saints, I would like for you to open up your Bibles to the book of Zechariah. The book of Zechariah. And you'll find these recorded words in chapter 3 of the book of Zechariah. And as we read these verses of Scripture, let God's Spirit minister to you. For the Lord knows what we have need of. We don't know, but God knows. And the Lord, he desires to meet all of our needs. He's able to meet all of our needs. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jeru Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? And now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of garments. Let the church say amen. amen. Now turn with me to the book of Jude. The book of Jude and we will begin at verse number 20. The book of Jude, beginning at verse 20. When you have it, say amen. amen. It is the book of Jude for our New Testament scripture, beginning at verse 20. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some having compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh." Verse 24 and 25, let's read together. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let the church say amen. Amen. We praise God for the reading and the hearing of God's holy word. And saints, this morning's message is coming out of the fire refined. I'm coming out of the fire refined. And God, he began to speak to my heart in regards to refinement. And refinement is a process. It is used on raw material such as gold, silver, precious stones. And this process, it is a, it prepares this raw material for practical use, for practical use. And this raw material, it is not consumed by fire. For fire can either do two things, it can build up or it can tell, tear down. Fire is either constructive or destructive. 
and the raw materials that are valuable commodities and dug out of the earth are not readily to be used for our daily practical life. But they have to go through some type of refinement, some type of process. And these elements, they are not affected by fire in a negative way. As a matter of fact, these items, they come out brighter and cleaner. They come out brighter and cleaner. And so they're more valuable after the process of refinement than in the beginning. And the Lord, he is showing us or using this as an illustration that when God brings you out of the fire, he wants you to be a better version of you then the beginning of the fire. Because before God can bring you out of a type of fire here, that means that you have fallen into some type of fire. And fire, it represents experiences, life experiences. They are described in the scriptures as fiery trials. And these trials and experiences that we face, sometimes they are unpleasant because that is what fire is. Fire is compared to something that's unpleasant or unwanted experience or situation. And God, he began to speak uh, through his word to show us that every decision that, decision that we face, it, it may not be pleasant. But God, he'll use that situation for refinement. That God might, through the situation, bring you out a cleaner and a brighter version of you. Whew. Hallelujah. Brighter means that the glory of God is shining through you in a greater way. And Cleaner means that the unclean thing has been removed from your life and God has replaced it with something even better. God, he is using the process of refinement to build us up. And it is our responsibility to let God have his way. To, amen, allow ourselves to be built up Amen. Building up is a process. It's a process of improvement. It's a process of not going downward, but going upward. Improvement means to add on items to increase the value. Building of a house or some type of building, it consists of a foundation and materials. And this process of building, it doesn't take place overnight. If the house is a brick house, you build that house one brick at a time. However, you, as you continue the, the building process and you add one brick to the next brick, the building is progressing in an upward way. God does not want us to stand still. Because if we stand still, we end up going backwards and not forwards. And the Lord is admonishing the saints, the beloved, to build yourself up in your most holy faith. See, faith cometh by hearing and hearing how? By the word of God. Without the word, we are unable to build ourselves up in a way that pleases God. Without the word, we are unable to build 
ourselves up in a way that glorifies God. And we need the necessary material to build ourselves up in a way that we can be those buildings that God is pleased with. That our building brings glory. And God says, not only must you build yourself up in your most holy faith, but it says, praying, praying, praying in the Holy Ghost. See, those are the three necessary items to build yourself up with. Hallelujah. Amen. We have to include the word of God, prayer, and the Holy Ghost in our lives daily. That God might continue to allow us to progress in an upward manner. Praying in the Holy Ghost means that the Holy Ghost is active in your life. And the Holy Ghost is the presence of God, the gift that he has given you. And that Holy Ghost makes contact with God. See, prayer is making contact with God in a spiritual way. And there is not a day that should go by that we don't make contact with Jesus. Amen. I thank God for prayer because prayer must have a priority, a pattern, and a purpose in your life. When prayer is a priority, and then the pattern will follow. There's a routine of prayer. Hallelujah. There is a communion in prayer. There's a fellowship in prayer. You don't go throughout the day without prayer. Prayer goes with you everywhere you go. And it's impossible to pray without the Holy Ghost. Oh, he's a good God, saints. And so as we use the elements that are provided by God, God let us know that we have a responsibility. Not only to build ourselves up, but to keep ourselves, in verse 21, in the love of God. Which means, saints, we must not fall out of love, but remain, amen, in a loving relationship with God. See, it is the Holy Ghost that puts the love of God in you. And that is our first love. And God has admonished us, don't fall in love with all the other things and fall out of love with me. I want you to love me with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. And the church at Ephesus, they fell out of love with God. Because they got so caught up and they fell in love with their works that they fell out of fellowship with the Lord. See, when we build ourselves up, with prayer, the Holy Ghost, and the Word, that is prioritizing fellowship. Hallelujah. That will increase and build up your fellowship with God. And God will yet build you up in a spiritual way. Many are looking for church buildings to be built numerically, but God is looking for his church to be built up spiritually. He built up by the presence of God, built up by the Holy Ghost and prayer. And the Lord, he has shown us that when you build yourself up in me, that you're going to face some experiences. Because I want to make you a better version of yourself. And so your faith, your faith that Amen. You're using to build yourself up with, it will be tried. It will be tried by fires and experiences. But yet, as the word began to say, only God can pull you out. And fire, glory to God, through experience, saints, amen. Our fiery trials can 
be according to the will of God or according to the will of man. See, we can fall into the fire by our own negligence, by our own disobedience. And we can bring experiences, unwanted experiences upon ourselves through our own disobedience. But yet God here will use that same situation to refine us. He wants us to learn from our mistakes. He wants us to learn from our wayward actions and bring us out a better version of ourselves. Now, the enemy wants to use these experiences to tear us down, to destroy us, to discourage us. However, the Lord, when he allows you to experience fiery trials, God has a purpose. And I'm so glad to know that God's purpose, I may not understand it, but I know that it's going to work out for my good. It's going to work out for my betterment. However, it's up to me to be able to yield to the will of God that I don't get burned. When I resist and the word of God and the will of God, then your experience, so to speak, it'll burn you. In, in which it, it'll cause more damage or hurt than it will edifying and building up. God's a good God. I trust that you see that not only, amen, you look to keep yourselves, the Bible says God is able to keep you. But you have to have a desire to keep yourself in his love. Keep yourself, your garment, hallelujah, clean. Keep your garment spotted from the fleshly things of this world. For the flesh works contrary to the spirit. The flesh is our Adamic nature. This flesh is what's in us that opposes the will of God. The flesh is a part of us that rebels against the spirit of the Lord. They work contrary one against the other. We focus ourselves on an external enemy, but we are walking with an enemy. We are walking with this flesh. But when I would do good, Lord, this flesh, this evil flesh is walking with me. And the Lord said, build yourself up in a spiritual way that you can be strong to bring this flesh under subjection. Oh, he's, he's teaching us and equipping us for what we need to be more refined when God brings us out of the fire. And the Lord, he used an example in the book of Zechariah in regards to his chosen people, the children of Israel. For the children of Israel were God's people before they even knew it. They were in the land of Egypt and they were in a type of fire, a type of furnace. And they were in an experience an unpleasant time. But yet God, he saw their afflictions. God, he sees what you're going through. He sees what you're facing. And God, he, he's a right now God. But yet he answers when? in his appointed time. And when God, he saw fit to bring them out and to turn down the thermostat, he raised up a servant by the name of Moses. And when God raised up this servant, God used him as a type of Christ to provide deliverance to provide salvation. He provided a way out of the fire. God plucked them out of the fire. Oh, he's a good God, saints. And when God brought them out of the fire, it was for the purpose that they may 
get to know God and serve God in the right way. And so when he brought them out of Egypt, he brought them into the wilderness that they might experience what it was to be without, but also that God would provide. Amen. See, when we go through fiery trials, we, our comfort may be disrupted. It, it, it's an uncomfortable situation whereby it can be uncomfort in our body, uncomfort, amen, in our finance, uncomfort in our home and in certain relationships. But God has a way of disrupting our, our comfort for the sake of us depending on him more because he's my comforter. He's my source of strength. He's my source of joy. But I can't get to know him in a greater way unless I experience a situation where my comfort, my joy has been disrupted. And so God, he has to take those experiences that are uncomfortable and he uses them to refine us. He uses them for his purpose. Hallelujah. That we might be cleaner and brighter than when we entered in to that fight. He's a good God, saints. Well, here, God showed Zechariah a vision of a high priest by the name of Joshua. And as he was standing before the angel of the Lord, look who was standing with him, Satan himself. And Satan was not helping Joshua accomplish the will of God. He was resisting. And that's the enemy's job. His job is to resist or hinder you or stop you from accomplishing uh, the will of God in your life. The, as, as God has admonished us to build ourselves up, well, the Satan, he's doing all he can to destroy and to knock down your building. Yet the Lord, he has let us know regardless of what the devil may try to do, he doesn't have the authority for whom God holds in the palm of his hand. No man can pluck out. See, it may seem as if, amen, you're not in the hand of God when you're in your fiery trial, but that's where God wants you to be. He wants you to be in that furnace. He wants you to be in that place where you're uncomfortable, but yet you're in his will, and I'm going to be with you. I, I'm going, not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. See, he's a good God. When you learn the mind of God and how God thinks, and you learn what his purpose is, you won't fret or worry when uncomfortable situations rise up, but you say, Lord, let your will be done. Lord, not my will, but Lord, let your will oh, be done. Don't let fire scare you. Because in a natural sense, sometimes fire can be scary because it is destructive and it can cause hurt and pain. But yet God uses fiery trials, amen, for his purpose of refinement. Oh, he's a good God. And here God, he began to let Satan know, put him on notice, I'm rebuking you. Because you're looking to come against my people. Not for the purpose of building up, but to tear down. See, God's purpose is to build up. God's purpose is for us to bring glory and bring praise. And so, amen, God told Satan, amen, this is my chosen people. Hallelujah. Amen, I brought them out. I plucked them out of Egypt. And yet, even when they fell back into the fire, when they were in the land of Babylon, I brought them out. Amen. This is my people. They belong to me. It's good to know that you belong to God. Hallelujah. The only way we know that is by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. It's by the Holy Ghost and the word of God. Making contact with God. Sometimes if you want to know if God is yet still on board, you give him praise, give him thanks, call on his name, and God will show up. Sometimes you just have to know that God is your, are you still on board? Amen. Am I still building a house whereby you're welcomed? 
that whereby you're pleased with. Because if you're not building up your house by the word of God and prayer and the Holy Ghost, that house is going to fall apart. You have to use not only the right foundation, but the right material. Some material, go hay, stubble, and wood, those materials are cheap material. And they cannot endure fire. They're consumed by fire. And some foundation will not stand the test of fire. Hallelujah. God used the illustration of the two builders, one that built his house upon the sand and one that built his house upon a rock. And these two individuals, they had the same material, but they used a different foundation. And the foundations represented one that was just a hearer of the word. Hallelujah. As opposed to one that was a hearer and a doer. A hearer and an obeyer. And the Lord let us know that the one who not only heard the word but obeyed what he heard. That house as it went through the storms of life. Mm, it went through the fiery trials. Amen. Glory to house. Glory to God. After the storm, after the, the, the time of refinement, amen, that house, oh, God was still standing. Amen. Because it was founded upon a rock. Yes, today Jesus is my rock and his word is our sure foundation. Yes, I'm glad, saints, that, that you just don't want that, to build your house that, and you don't want your coming that, to be in vain. That, oh, Lord, this don't come just to hear. That, oh, that which sounds good. That, but yet God wants that, you to take this word that, and apply it that, to your house. That, make it personal. That, keep your garments that, clean and spotless. That, that means live a life, that, a lifestyle that, of holiness. That, a separated life that, from the pollutions that, and the filthiness. That of the world that and of this flesh that well that this man Joshua that he represented the children of Israel that and as he stood before God that oh the devil that was put on notice that to let him know that ah, this is my child that but he's standing before me that with a filthy garment that Lord 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 that God is not pleased that with our sin that but yet that he's a merciful God that he's a forgiving God that he's a loving God that and the devil wants you to be destroyed by sin that but thank God that the Lord let us know that I'm your advocate that you come unto me that and I will wash you that I will cleanse you that of all your iniquity that and as he stood that before the Lord that God told him to take away that those filthy garments that and give him a change of clothes that give him a new garment that because only God that can take that which is unclean that and make it clean that he's a good God that I'm glad that and one day that Jesus that he came that into this world that to build a church that and the gates of hell that regardless of that the devil trying to stop it that he can't stop that the work that and the will of God He's going to do all he can to try, even to the point where 
when he looked to crucify that, the Savior that, on the cross. That, but yet, that, little did he realize that he was bringing in that, his own defeat. That, he was bringing in that, his own demise. That, because Jesus, that, he said, I'm going to close myself with a garment, a garment of flesh, and yet this flesh, this building has to be torn down, this flesh has to be broken, but in three days later, I'm going to build it up, I'm going to build it up again, he's a good God, Jesus went through his furnace, what about you, and what about me that God has to break us down that without troubles that with problems that that we can search that not the outside that but Lord search me that what is your purpose Lord that Lord I want to come out that a better version that of myself that I want to come out that of the fire refined that that I might know you that just a little bit better and Jesus he not only will hold you where the fire can't burn you he'll keep you if you got a mind to be kept he's a good God God had some servants by the name of Sadrach Meshach and Abednego and because they stood on the truth of God they were put in the furnace they were persecuted for the sake of God see you don't have to disobey God for unwanted situations that to come your way that people will hate you that without a cause that they hate you that for righteousness sake that but that's all right Lord that whatever your will is that let it be done that because I know that as I go into the fire that I'm gonna come out that a better version that than when I went in that I may not be pleasant that but that's all right after a while, after a while, the joy, the glory of God will shine a little bit brighter than it did before. Well, when these servants were thrown into the furnace, glory to God, the devil locked them up. But that didn't stop Jesus from entering in. He's a good God. Regardless of the fire, the furnace that you're going through, just wait. Wait for Jesus to show up. Wait for his presence to show up by praying in the Holy Ghost by building yourself up in the Holy Ghost you praise God in the Holy Ghost a Holy Ghost praise will get God's attention and before you realize it the presence of God is with you in the furnace the king looked he looked again he didn't see three, but he saw four. Jesus was the fourth. Glory to God with his servants. I'm glad that God will be with you. God will show up. He won't take you out of the furnace, but he'll take the heat out of the flame. He'll turn down that thermostat make you comfortable in your furnace only God can do the impossible I'm glad that he brought me out all right he's bringing me out all right let God refine you let God make you let God let God Woo. oh purge those things that are not like the Lord. 
God has a way of purging that's not like our way. His fire don't burn. But if we resist and not surrender to the will of God, we will be burned. We can bring and make the situation worse than we can make it better. And I want you to see, I hope you see, that God don't always bring you immediately out of the fire, but yet his presence will be with you in the fire. That's far more important. I said that's far more important that God is with you in the fire. That means he's yet shaping you. He's comforting you. He's counseling you while you're in the fire. While you're going through. You need counsel. You need direction. You need comfort. Because you may not always understand why and what the purpose is. But as long as I can make contact with Jesus by the Holy Ghost, amen, I know everything's going to be all right. And see, when the king saw four loose, <laughs> see, they weren't bound. See, when you're in, your, you're in the fire of God and you're yielding to the will of God, you don't let your situation define you. You don't let your situation hold you down and control you. Oh, God. But you can be in this situation, and yet no one knows what you're going through. Because you got a joy. I said, you got a joy, a Holy Ghost joy. Hallelujah. That can give you a song. And people don't realize that, amen, you're going through a difficult time. But they don't have to know that. Because my praise, amen, is not conditional on my situation. My praise is because I love God. Oh, and that love should not decrease but increase. Don't fall out of love with God. Glory! Because when you fall out of love with God, then it affects your praise. It affects your prayer. And God wants us to build ourselves up in a spiritual way, regardless of what's going on externally. And so when God Hallelujah, moved on the king's heart. Open the door, let him out. <laughs> God brought him out, didn't he? It was God that brought him out. See, the devil thinks he's in control. Oh, no, but he's not in control. God's in control. And see, when the presence of God show up, will you thank God? Amen, he's bringing you out. He's bringing you out. A better version of yourself. When these men came out, there was no sins or no Amen. Hallelujah. Proof or evidence that fire had touched them. Glory to God. That is when God purifies. God is purging you. He gives you a new garment. My Lord, I hope you see the work and the will of God. He's refining you and bringing you out even better. Then you entered in. And these men knew and experienced God in a greater way. But if they did not experience this fiery trial, they would not have known God. And they would not have come out in a way that was better than when they went in. And the king exalted them, but it was God that exalted them even higher than what they were before. <laughs> and God used these men to be a witness to the king to let him know that there is a God. I said, there is a God in the land. Hallelujah. And this is the God, not the golden image, but this is the God in whom we should serve. Now, that he may not have changed his ways, but yet God, he'll make your enemies at peace with you. And he will allow men and women to acknowledge God. But God wants us to get to know him. Amen. In a better way. I praise him and thank God for his word. Saying to God, he'll refine you. Hallelujah. But it's going to take unpleasant, uncomfortable situations, but rest assured, build yourself up. Hallelujah. By prayer. Amen. Your faith and the Holy Ghost. He's worthy to be praised. Precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.